This episode of Live WPTV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. This is the Boston WordPress meetup. Uh, quick show of hands, who is new here for the first time? Wow, awesome. Um, who found out about this through meetup.com? Twitter? Friends? Mm-hmm. How else did you find out? Google search. Okay. Oh. Also Google search. Uh, Bing search. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, that's the uh, Wi-Fi code. If you have not already connected, our website, Twitter, hashtag. Just a quick background. We've been doing this for, I think, just about four years. Um, it was founded in 2008. We've grown really, really quickly. We'll have more, yes. more on that a little bit. Um, generous uh, Microsoft nerd for providing a great venue, Wi-Fi, accommodations, AV, and everything since uh, 2009. So. Thanks, Microsoft. Uh, Hostgear.com, they're our provider. Um, we have a nice one-click install for WordPress site for, for beginners. If you decide to move over, Boston WP Media <coughs> for a 25% discount. Uh, we have next here. Um, we have a backup sponsor. This was from last month's meetup. Um, if you don't know what happened last month, I completely destroyed one of our sites. I backed it up, restored it, destroyed it again, haven't restored it since. Um, so if you want to watch the video, it's on our site. Um, but if you are interested in Backup Buddy, if you use the coupon code CURT30, it's 30% off of, I think, the first two packages. Um, not the developer package, but it expires Wednesday, I think. So take a look. You can watch the video, decide if you want to get it or not. Um, we don't get anything. We just like the product. Yeah, so we have are now the third largest uh, WordPress meetup in the world with over 1,107 members. Yeah. And yeah, we're growing pretty fast. Um, it's hard to keep up with everything. Uh, we have like a job board that needs some attention. We have some forums that have not been up for months, and we're getting a lot of complaints. We hear them. Um, we're looking for one or two people that would like to help contribute and become um, organizers of this group to help with uh, meetings. The monthly things, uh, the administrative tasks, and all kinds of stuff. Um, email myself, Kurt, or John. Um, these slides will be up online on our website when we post the meeting minutes with the video from like Tom back there. Um, we want to welcome John Bishop, who is right there. John, you want to stand up for the camera? Um, John's our new organizer. He'll um, be sitting up here with one of us, or both of us. Uh, for the meeting minutes. So um, he has his bio here. He's been working with WordPress for a while now. He's given a cu- couple talks here, He's spoken at WordCamp, um, and his email will be jbishop at bostonwp uh, as soon as we set that up. Um, bostonwp.org, so we, we have meetup minutes, info, and videos. We, we record every session, so if you can't make one, or sometimes we have two, and you go to one and not the other, um, you can always get the videos for these events. And we have a job board. How many people know about the job board or ever use the job board? Okay, we've got to fix that. Um, we have a job board, and it's not, I always say this, we're going to fix it, I promise. But uh, if you join bostonwp.org, you create an account, and you edit your profile, there's an option to subscribe to receive jobs um, weekly. So if you're a freelancer and you want to get this information, definitely do that. And forums will be up soon, I promise. Um, BostonWPDemo.com, um, we built this site specifically so that people who want to look at framework themes can try it before you buy it. So we have about seven or eight framework themes there to poke around. We'll set you up with an account. If you're interested, you can email us at bo- demo at BostonWP.org. Uh, we'll give you an account, give you an a, week, a week to fool around with it, completely destroy it, and we'll bring it back up to work. So Live WP is a, a side project of ours where Kurt and I meet up at a, a local bar or pub and we talk about WordPress informally over some years and we videotape it and things get out of line sometimes. But we've been a little negligent on that. Um, we have some great sponsors and we definitely have, um, we're happy to do it. We provide food and stuff, but it's been tough finding a venue. So if you can help with that, um, any local venue in Cambridge or Boston area, 
that is happy to have us and film, we will order food and, and bring a small crowd. So um, follow, go to the website, you can see past episodes. Uh, follow Twitter and we'll let you know when the next one is and definitely show up. Uh, help Boston the WordPress meetup. Um, we welcome donations. We have a donate button on our, on our website. Um, it goes to food, uh, some of the hosting costs, um, trainings and workshops and other events. Um, if you want to sponsor a meetup, get in touch with one of us and we'll be happy to give you some more information. Uh, we want to thank all of those who have donated in the past. And um, I think the link's right there, yeah. To, uh, donate. Uh, WordPress, you're the meetup. So Jane Wells, um, she works for Automatic, the parent company of WordPress. Um, she deemed this the year of the meetup where WordPress itself is actually going to be sponsoring uh, meetup accounts for WordPress meetups just like this. Um, so there are no more meetup.com fees. Um, there's just more exposure via WordPress um, and other social media. Um, you can read more about it on wordpress.org slash news. Um, there are some, some <coughs> talks going around where um, if you are interested in speaking in the, this year's <coughs> upcoming WordCamp, which will hopefully be sometime this summer, um, you might need to speak at a local WordPress meetup such as this before you need to speak at a WordCamp. Um, it's, just a, it's just a trial basis. Um, talk to your peers before you talk in a more national crowd. Um, <laughs> But if you are interested in speaking sometime soon, let us know. We'll be happy to fit you in. And yeah, if you don't know what a WordCamp is, it's um, it's like the, the big event, annual WordPress um, conference sort of event that happens in many different places around the world. Boston's first one was uh, in 2010, and we hope to do it again this year. Um, and so basically what this all means is that uh, WordPress, Automatic, the company that, that sponsors WordPress is behind WordPress is now going to really support these meetups, so hopefully you'll see more members and more support from them. Finally, Phyllis. Phyllis, a not-so-secret world of WordPress plugins. So she is a marketing and technology coach for people who don't quite understand computers or didn't grow up with them. Um, first website in 1997, and uh, you've used WordPress for a while. But I don't remember how long. <laughs> so it must be a while. Okay, so right. we have to switch this? Yes. Hi. So we were talking about my first site went up in 1997. And it was an e commerce site. And there weren't shopping carts. So you had to print out a form and fax it or mail it to me. Um, a couple of years later, I got there were shopping carts around. And uh, my first shopping cart was with this little company called Intel that was doing shopping carts. And a couple of years later, I got a letter saying they were closing it down to focus on other parts of their business. <laughs> More profitable than shopping carts. <laughs> so, um, there is something called the Wayback Machine. And it goes through and um, archives websites <coughs> over and over again. Uh, they didn't start my site until, I think, 98 or 99. And in those really early days, the picture, uh, it doesn't have the pictures, but this, I think, is 2001. Um, it was still pretty simple. Um, but it worked, and from there, I went on to other things. But at the end, um, I'll put up a slide with all the URLs, and that the Wayback Machine is on it, and it will also be on my website. Um, so you can go look at it. Um, so, okay. so that was just for fun. It has nothing to do with WordPress. Um, so how um, I'm going to structure this is we're going to talk about plugins in general. And I'll show you how I find you know the right one. Although there is no right one, it's the one that's right for the moment um, that is going to work and is rated pretty highly. Uh, then I'll install one and we'll look at what it does. So, and I'm half dry now, so excuse me. That's the drink. So, the reason there are plugins, or what plugins do, 
is it extends the functionality of WordPress without needing to do programming. Uh, it's really flexible, and there are many choices. This is live, and it, oh, and it went up. Last night, it was 18,478 plugins, and now it's 18,510 plugins. So that's how fast the plugins grow, um, and you won't, I can't imagine needing all of them. And there are plugins that do stuff you have no idea what it is. Um, so when I started using WordPress, and I just did it by playing around with it, it, the way I think I found out about plugins other than it's on the dashboard is I needed to do something, probably a contact form. And so I started searching for contact form, and I ended up here. And I don't remember what the number of plugins was, but it was pretty low. So, um, so these are they. You can search this all kinds of ways, but these are the most popular plugins. And when you're looking for something, you are, popular is probably a pretty good bet. Uh, so we're going to look at Contact Form Seven. Oh, I can see this. Um, and you saw it was in the popular category. It was last updated February 22nd, so it's current, uh, and it's had more than 6 million downloads, which means a lot of people have tried it and it's working, and it has a rating of four stars. So the way plugins work, it's sort of like eBay. You have to get enough reviews to get your stars. Uh, and gradually, you know, something becomes popular. But when I'm looking for plugins, that's really where I'm looking. You know, I know I'm looking for a contact form. So, um, and let's see. Okay, so. It's showing, this is page, is showing one through eight of 621 plugins listed on tagged contact form. Um, there are a lot of choices. Now, here's one with one star and 1,800 downloads. I'm not going to try it. I'll give it to somebody else. I, I want something that I know is going to work. Uh, fast, secure contact form has four and a half stars, and has been downloaded two million times. And this is actually a form that I use on one of my sites that we'll look at later. So, uh, so when I'm looking to decide on what um, plugin to use, this is the first place I go when I want to look at stars and how many people have had it, are using it. But the other thing I want I do is I go out and I Google for contact form, and you will find thousands of lists of the ten best plugins you must have, and all kinds of reviews. And I'll read a bunch of those. Generally, something keeps popping to the top that there's some sort of uh, consensus about. Um, about what are working, and it's, you know, the ones in the millions. This is a site I use a lot, and I'm looking to find out rankings and find out about stuff. Um, I Google for it, but this WPMU org is pretty good, and I trust them. Uh, so I'll go here and see what they say. Uh, they have a lot of uh, plugins right on the site. Uh, here's one about everybody's tired of CAPTCHA. So they review it, and if you're looking for something else, let's see what it is. You can use this plugin. So instead of the letters, you have to move the color boxes on top of each other. Uh, I've read some of the reviews of it. People have complained that if you're colorblind, it's not any good. But, uh, yeah. 
it's, get, it's harder and harder to get stuff that uh, the robots can't play at OC, and they call it game play. So that, uh, I'm going to show you a plugin that has captured already <coughs> in it. So, you know, there are site, there are plugins that are pretty much required that you're going to have to have backup something to uh, get rid of spam, uh, social media, probably contact form, um, embedding photo galleries or YouTube. Uh, so, you know, um, you'll go out and search on those. This is, my host is DreamHost, and when they, this is a, I installed this uh, WordPress yesterday, so this is a clean install and nothing's been done to it. And they put all of this stuff on it that I really don't want. Um, you know, they get to pick it, and the fact is I might want some of these later, but I would rather go sort of do it in my time, in the order that I'm looking at it, to decide what I'm going to use. So I've checked the ones I don't want. I'm going to go to bulk actions, and I'm going to delete them all. <coughs> yes, delete these files. OK, so now what I have here are two plugins that were installed originally, but that I, would, I will use. Um, this is a spam filter and um, you really need a caching site, a caching plugin on almost every site. It speeds up how fast it responds. And like everything else, there are tons of choices. This one is good. You'll see stuff for uh, a W3 uh, caching. I, the same thing. I go and I look and I read and when I went through to do this, I looked at a bunch of my sites and realized I have different ones on all the sites. And partly it's a function of having just done them at different times. And sometimes I'll set something up and I'll go back and like, remember that I like it, so I'll go and get it. Um, but we're, yeah. Is there a minimum level of traffic that warrants caching? Like if, if I'm getting like 50 to 100, Page views a day. Well, it doesn't hurt to have it. I mean, I, you know, I think it speeds up when I'm working on it myself because oh. it's all there. So the thing about plugins is probably 98% of them are free. Uh, you don't want to load up with too many because they will slow the site down. But if you use the ones that are important, you know, you're going to use that. Um, you're going to want a backup one. I've been using something called uh, DB, WP, DB, DB, um, Okay, so this is a live site. So, uh, and this backup has tons of functions, which I like that. I don't know if you can see. <coughs> so I'm using this one, and the link is on the sheet. I'll give you at the link at the end because it does a whole bunch of stuff. And one of the things that it does that isn't critical but that I like is it mails me a copy of the backup every time it does it. So I know it's working. Otherwise, I just have to trust. That um, and I use some other ones as well. And there are the ones that we, uh, they were talking about earlier. There are ones that use Amazon to back up onto. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use that contact form 7. It's really popular. Lots of people are using it. So um, you can go to it here, 
and you see it says download the version. If you do this, it's going to download a zip file, which then you have to open an FTP backup. There is a much easier way of doing it, which is to go to your site and go, I'm going to go to plugins and get the pull down menu. This is a new version of WordPress. It doesn't do that. So, okay. So there's plugins, and I'm going to add new. And I'm going to search. If I, I could search for contact form, and it would give me that list of 600 and whatever. I know that I want contact form 7 because I've looked it up. So I put it in there, and it's going to go search plugins. And there it is. Uh, the details we looked at, that's where it's going to tell you a little bit more about it, uh, what version it's using. But I really, you know, I've done that kind of research before. So now I'm just, I'm in my version of WordPress and I'm going to install. Okay. So it's downloading the install package. Uh, it's installed it and that's it. So now I'm going to activate it. And <coughs> as you see here on the <coughs> plugin page, there it is. There are some of the plugins you just use, um, but stuff like contact form or the database, you're going to have to enter the um, criteria that make it work for you. And certainly contact forms are one of them. So. So in this case, when we just activated it, the settings are right here underneath the name. There are other ones where the settings are going to be in the settings pull down here. Um, this one. Okay, so there's WPDD Manager, which is the one that I'm using. Um, and that one, the settings, it has its own thing of settings here. It has this um, database. So not a big deal. The form, you'll figure it out pretty quickly if it has settings. go in and do our set it, set it up. Um, this one is going, it's picked up stuff from my installation, so it's going to, when the form is filled out, it's going to mail it to me. Uh, the <coughs> name will be picked up from the form and the subject, and you just go through, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, and you test it, and it has error messages. So it's all the stuff you generally see when you do a contact form. You said it to have certain questions? Yeah. And I'll show you. This is fast, secure contact form. This is on a different site. So this one has three form, four forms that I can do. So there's form one, that is really basic. I think this is just you know, uh, comments and questions. Um, let's see. Okay, so here are the fields. So this form is requiring uh, name field, email field, subject field, message field. I generally only take the name field and email field and sometimes 
I don't need to take that. So I'm going to just pull them out and make them not available. The other option is not required, and you see it there uh, on lots of forms. You all know that part. So here are the extra fields. You know, and you can do tons of stuff. Um, redirects, HTML, Okay, so this is the form that is up on the page with the links that I just <coughs> created on my site. Giveaway, but um, so that form that we just looked at, name is required, email address is required. Really. You can put a subject in, not required. You can put a message in, not required. And this one has captured right, built right into it. And I have it set at low to make it as easy as possible. I'm, I'm always surprised at how fast uh, the spammers notice the site goes up. Then too, it's like, I put it up, I go get coffee, I come back, and, you know, I've been hit a thousand times. You know, I barely know it's up. So that's when I started using the capture. And I don't use it on all the sites, but um, I'd rather not do it. Today. So another plug-in that I, for me, is critical. is having a WYSIWYG editor. <coughs> and a WYSIWYG editor is what you see is what you get, and it makes it behave more like Word or something else that you're used to. Otherwise, you've got to go, you have to go in and do HTML. So this is the new installation. And it only has one page, the sample page. And you can see these are your options for formatting. It's pretty basic. There's this button that's called the kitchen sink and gives you some more. But and it's usable. I mean there's nothing wrong with it. But with a plug-in, you can get many more.
but it gives you lots more flexibility than the standard one, which is that. And on that one, there's still, I don't know how many left that I could have chosen. So this is a plugin called Ultimate a Tiny MCE. Uh, there are a whole bunch of versions of MCE. Um, it's one of those things where you have to just sort of go and look and read. I have, this one is Ultimate. I have another site with Tiny. They all basically do the same thing. So, I put in tiny MCE advanced because that's where I was. But you can see you have lots of choices here. Um, and again, I'm sticking, I mean, I use, I think, ultimate and advanced. Um, there are other ones that have, this one has advanced custom fields. There are ones that have work with particular um, other features. So, have I'll, you used it to embed video? I noticed there's a YouTube button. Um, yeah, but it, where did the YouTube button go? Um, oh, I, uh, yes, you can use it here. You can use it to embed video. Um, see, this one is also, you can insert or edit an image. And there are tons of plugins to do that. You don't need to use this YouTube button. Uh, on one side, I use a plugin that called Sashin that pulls from Picasso albums. And it, I mean, it's just easy because I have Picasso on the computer. So when I'm looking at pictures, I put them all in an album and I can go back out. And it will pick up the album. Features that it gives me so I can do all kinds of stuff with it but the good part is I'm already working with these files and doing other stuff with them so this one picks it up it works I think before I had this I had something else um, with all of them there's it's, there's no right answer they can you know you use what fits if you don't like it it's free you delete it you get another one uh, they all, you know, look a little bit different. Once you're doing a lot of sites, I mean, it becomes easier to use the same thing all the time. And you can actually set it up so when you install a site, it does that. Um, but these are sites that I sort of play with. So I try different things. Okay, so the other thing that I wanted to show you on We're going back to contact form seven. So this is the contact form we were looking at before. And what it's telling me, I can make the four forms, but what I'm looking at is this piece right here. And that's a short code. So once I fill all of this stuff in, 
I'm going to take that short code, and I actually, this is the one I did today. Uh, I used the short code for form three. So here it is. And I'm going to cut and paste that into the page that I'm using it on. This is the page that has all the um, links on it. And there's the short form code. So it's on the visual editor. It's not on uh, the HTML editor. Okay, so there it is. So I, even though it's a code, you pick it up and you bring it here. Not here, although you can find it in here. But that's what makes it really easy to use. You can move it around, you can put it anywhere on the page, you can put it on another page. But I had set that all up in the settings. That's where all the information is. I'm going to pick up the short code and put it here. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of short codes. There's um, themes that come with lots of short codes to do all kinds of stuff already built in. It's another way of getting a shortcut. So, um, actually, I'm going to show you more This is not on the page that I created, but I'll put it on there. These, these are themes that you buy, but they're really inexpensive. I think it's $39 for the year, and they have lots of short codes. So inserting this stuff is as simple as the piece that I just showed you, which is you fill it out, you pick up this little piece of code, and you stick it on the visual page. Um, and it's there. You know, and you can move them around. There are short codes. You don't have to come here, but uh, there are lots of short codes, and you can download them as well. Uh, this is good. And I actually learned about these themes at WordCamp last summer. Uh, that they're all here, and it's $39 a day. It was pretty easy to decide to get it. And that's elegant themes. So, um, okay, I think yeah, we're pretty much, I can take some questions. Um, I will give out, here's the URL.
Okay, so this is my site. There is now a page called that's what's next dot com slash WP. <coughs> and it has the links that I talked about. I'll add elegant themes and maybe a couple of others. Um, and here's the deal. There's a basket on the back counter there. And if you'll put your business card in, um, on Friday, I'm going to do a drawing for the WordPress 3 cookbook, which is um, reviewed actually in the link is here at WPMU.org. Uh, if you don't have a card, you can come to this page and fill out the form. And on Friday, I'll pick one and email you. So, um, okay, so I think questions. Yeah. Have you problems with using free um, themes? <coughs> like, um, I don't know if I've heard that they can be, um, they can include viruses, but I was using a couple free ones, and then I found that my name was being put on another site, and they had the same theme, but the site then went down, so. Yes. And <coughs> what can the viruses do? Well, there are viruses, and the other concern is copyright issues which is somebody picks up a free theme from somebody else and puts it on their site, and you sort of get stuck in the middle of that. The way to get around it is um, go through WordPress or go to a site that you really trust um, for free themes. And this new install, I mean, not only does my host install way too many plugins. They also install way too many themes. Six pages, 136 items of themes. Um, generally what I do is not install them, or once I decide what I'm going to use, I go through and do a mass delete through uh, FTP. So what kinds of viruses uh, could be contained in a theme? What could they do with the damage? All the things that viruses do. They usually contain like malware that will you know, redirect you to another site or track what you're doing or steal some of your user's information. It really depends on the type of virus that you're getting. But the uh, most, one of the most popular ones is it'll just insert like a string at the bottom of your footer and it'll automatically start tracking or showing pop-ups and stuff like that. But if you go through WordPress.org, they reveal the themes that go in there, so you're pretty safe on WordPress.org. And on popular sites like Smashing Magazine, they do like, they review lots of themes. Okay. Um, you're pretty safe there too. Okay. Yeah, and it's sort of the established companies who can't afford to have something go wrong. Uh, you know, and as I said, DreamHost gives you all of these options without even going anywhere. Didn't they recently make that optional? They did. Great. Um, I noticed it last night for the first time. It used to be that when you did the one-click install at DreamHost, this is what you got. And last night when I installed this, there's now a checkbox underneath that says something about don't install all the junk. It's not what it says, but... Um, Essentially, that's the answer, and it's great because taking, getting rid of all of this stuff is really time-consuming, and I get rid of it because it slows the whole site down. Um, you know, and I may play with something. Um, Yeah, because it's just more stuff that's there. Yeah, they're taking up space. Um, no, but I mean, and, you know, and I can't tell you the technical reason that it does, but it's the same thing with plugins. You can have all these plugins that are deactivated, and it will slow it down as well. So the. Um, um, so, 
this is the uh, theme that was installed last night on this new thing. And do you know if there are any plugins that will take that header image and like install a logo in the upper left corner of it? Um, I don't. That's probably not a plugin. That's that you go into the file and using Photoshop or something, you just do it. Um, create a new banner. Uh, but so this is what it looks like, and I can make it look like this. Yeah. I mean, it depends on what I'm doing with it. Um, you know, there's the contact form and there's the backup and there's the social media and there's caching and there's spam, so that's five right off. Uh, the other night I went and found one, I was putting a table in something and I went and found a plugin for table that I don't generally use. It's really easy to get too many. Um, this is some plugins. This is okay. So now, that's what it looks like. Yes. What is the hello world? It comes with automatic, but, but yeah, but what it is, it's funny. So we're going to go back here. An enthusiasm of an entire generation, well, you can see it, summed up in two words and was sung most famously. Um, when activated, you will randomly see a lyric from Hello Dolly in the upper right corner of your green screen on every page. <laughs> and that comes with it. Um, I figure there's enough going on, I don't need any more stuff. Yeah. What's the best social media plugin? Oh, there's no answer. You know, with any of this stuff, there's no right answer. It depends on what you how many buttons you want, what you want to look at. Somebody in the back have it. No, I'm sorry, never mind. Um, you know, you have to play with them and you have to pick up something that'll fit in your site. Um, what, what do you mean? Right, well, that, and that's what I'm saying. You can get social media plugins that give you red and dig it and then you know, a whole slew of things. You probably can get 30 ones on it. And maybe what you want is Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn. So you're going to get one that has that. Um, doesn't take up as much space, isn't as complicated. You just have to look at it. Um, and with all of them, there's no right answer. Yes? Are there plugins that are smaller than others? Some that are less complex, so they don't take as much space or as much room to, to run. Because I found that the FS contact form is a great form, but because it does so much and it's so involved that it's loaded along with the other plugins, it's going to slow down. Um, yeah, and that's a good point. I think I have a really nothing. Um, <coughs> One of the things that I noticed, and this is another talk, but there are all kinds of ways of testing the speed of your site. And what happens is I was running a site, and it was running really slow. It's like a nothing site. It has eight pages. And I felt like I could take a nap while it was waiting to load. So what I went through and did was start pulling out plugins to see what was slowing it down. And there are, there are plugins that 
you know, is sort of known, and if you read reviews, they'll say this one is slow. This is um, contact form. Uh, yeah, contact form plugin. And it's really simple. It basically gives you no options. But, but it doesn't take much time or much space. And need a basic contact form, this is great. You know, you don't have to make any choices. You just do it. Yeah. Um, I can say from experience that contact seven is good. It works on my sites and it's provide a lot of flexibility. But um, <clears throat> one of the things that I haven't done is added uh, a tiny header. Um, maybe you can save me some research. Have you come across any that allow you to select which or they all do. Oh, well, not, features, I, I, so they, they, maybe they don't all, but I, basically point. most of them do. I'm running ultimate on one and advanced on another. You choose a lot of the buttons that are available for Yeah, that cool. gives you um, plenty of choice. Uh, okay, so. This is, you can select which buttons go on the rows, and you see there are tons of choices. And you just pick and choose which ones you're going to use. Advanced features. Um, these are added bonuses I have included. Um, so here's where you're changing what will go on the bar. And the other one. So that donate button comes with it? The donate button is the developer hoping that you will <coughs> like it and send them some money. Uh, most of these are free. And that's sort of how people um, get paid. OK, so this one is ultimate timing MCA. Basically the same. There's That's good. Yes. In regards to photos, do you have any good plugins that will not only um, insert the photos, but I've seen some sites where the photos rotate every few seconds? Yes. There are probably 150 that will do a slide. I, I don't know, you know, I haven't used it. I have um, a theme that comes with one, and I use that. It's the same thing. You have to go and look at them. And the way I do something with that is I go to the sites and that review stuff. Next Gen, yeah. Yeah, Next Gen has a ton of music. Okay, and next gen has a few um, different versions as well. But you can see, I mean, they're all rated highly. You know, you go in and it tells you a little bit about it. And here are the features. You know, there's sort of no easy way to do it. Yeah. Is there a plugin that will notify people that there's a new post on your blog? Sure. I can't tell you what it is, but sure. Jetpack. Isn't that part of Jetpack? It's built in now, yeah. Oh, it, yeah. What's it called? Jetpack. It's it's jetpack. Broken. And that's actually one of the ones that will come already installed by Keller Dolly uh, because it's from WordPress. If you do one click install. Think you don't think it doesn't it's, 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 it's not Okay. So if you do the install with a lot of stuff, exactly. chances are um, you'll get it. Um, I'm a new um,
I'm going to go see if this one says. So there are some developer add-ons that will allow you to look at the sites that you're on as you visit them and see what's there. I don't know, I've never looked for plugins, I'm looking for other stuff. I generally am looking for keywords. Um, what's this one called? Uh, SEO site tools. Oh, which is another uh, plugin that you're going to want to have that's on the list of things you must have. So I have a question. Um, we developed a web application using partners, not our company, but uh, partners have developed it. And it's, it's built in PHP. Uh -huh. And there's a lot of functionality in it. It's like a social media app. Um, but we want to add more functionality. But a lot of it looks like what WordPress does. It looks like what some of these plugins do. Do people know of examples where you have you're using WordPress um, within a PHP application, and you use plug, and you can then use these plugins as part of that. It's just a separate install. It so can live. WordPress, WordPress can live with other things. It can it can live mm -hmm. with things, yep. and it's a separate install, meaning um, it has its own database. Okay, Talks you can't you can't have the, the same database function for. You could actually. You could also, however your program works, uh, if you're just if you have one page that outputs the information, there's, assuming there's all kinds of background stuff happening, you could use a page template for that one page and have that page display or have the functionality your app has. But there's a couple ways you could approach it. You could have a separate site or like separate install. Can you, can you actually get the, the source code for WordPress yeah. so that our developers could actually take it's portions open source, of that anybody. code and integrate? Okay. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> And then you could use these plugins to add additional yeah. functionality. Or do the plugins require Depending on what you're trying to a full-blown WordPress It might be easier to find the functionality outside of WordPress yeah. if you have your own okay. thing going. Okay. Because you, you, know, you just use the frameworks, the same frameworks model that WordPress uses, and they can implement the gadgets that develop specific things. Okay. And codes for those each plugin is available. Okay. So this is my new toy, this extension. Uh, extensions for the browsers are the same thing as plugins. There are millions of them. But um, this one allows you, this is the Boston WordPress site, to go in and look at a lot of the code. And what I've been doing is looking at keywords for my competitors to see what they're using. Um, you know, here's the social media page. Uh, little tweets on the paper right here. Twelve. <clears throat> Tons of stuff. You know, more than you probably need to know, but if you're interested. And that is. Uh, what's other I'm looking. This set. Up here. SEO site tools and Chrome. Anybody else? Yeah. Does anybody know of you or anybody know a particularly good Brightcode plugin or HTML5 that will accommodate Brightcode? I saw you were using it. Media Elements is actually really good for HTML5 video and WordPress. Oh, okay. and that actually is one of the ones that can pre-install. Uh, media Elements. It basically mimics HTML5 video functionality for other browsers. And it basically gives you that cross-browser functionality with HTML5 video. Um, you might be able to use Brightcode. I don't know for sure. But if you Google Brightcode or look in the plugin repository, I'm sure there's plenty. Yeah, there actually aren't many Brightcode specific ones, but there is one that will accommodate Brightcode that may have been. Doesn't Brightcode still give you an embed code? 
Yeah, their embed does. code we, should we be haven't the actually started using it yet. Because if it gives you the embed code, you just go over the HTML and you take that embed code and you put it in there and it just plugs it right okay. in. Cool. Yeah, so that, that functionality is actually built into the bread code embed code. So is does it, it give you a player though? Yeah. I'm not yeah, sure. It's whatever the embed code is, it gives this you the whole iframe. Okay. I'll play with it. Yeah. This is an example of sort of of the level of plugin um, in terms of your knowledge. Yeah, I code a little bit. I use HTML. I can go in and edit the themes. I don't do a lot of other coding. You know, I can do all of this without having to do it. So, you know, that's sort of the, I'm not writing any plugins. I just want to know what works. And I know enough probably sometimes to get myself into trouble. Um, you know, if I find something that I need, this table project made me crazy. And I ended up going into the editor, into the CSS file and fixing it. But you can really do a lot without going into any kind of detail about what happens internally and what the code does. Um, do any plugins though take the spam that it gives in it? Captured and automatically deleted because I'm using that, but I have like 55,000 comments over the past year or two that I have to then go in and manually delete them all. Do you? I have. Um, I'm just deleting them. Uh, yeah, I'm guessing that somewhere in there. Uh, it's a setting? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's one of these things. If you want it, somebody has probably written a plugin for it. Um, yeah. Um, I've had my WordPress on a Microsoft server. Thank you, Microsoft, for hosting me here. And I was recommended to go over uh, like Linux, and I didn't see any significant improvement. Would plugins have any detrimental effect on what kind of server I was running my WordPress being on? Technical question, but I don't think so. I think that you know you may have a plugin that is affecting something. Um, or you're on a server that is inherently slow, or it's shared and there's somebody using way too much of it and not leaving much for you. So, um, is there uh, any uh, handy, handy plugins? You know, that will tell that. <laughs> um, there aren't, well, maybe there are plugins, but th what there really are are sites that will tell you. Um, Is it a big site? No. Well, and it's probably, I mean, it may be similar to this thing that I had, that it was tiny and I could not for the life of me figure out why it was running so slow. And after screwing around with it for way too long, I deleted it and I put it back. You know, I don't know why, um, but I tried different caching software. None of it made sense because it was so small and I kept taking the plugins out. You know, it's one of those things. It's always something like that. Anybody else? Yes. Well, this is a database. This, 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 these sites are our database. Right. So, um, in terms of managing the, the databases, is that internal? Can you do that from WordPress or no? Um, you can. And I that would, I could would be a plugin. Um, okay, so this is the, the uh, database that I'm using. So, uh, this is the back of software. So, here's my database. Here's the backup settings. 
and I'm checking the backup. Here is managing the backups. Which can also affect the performance. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, one of the things I notice here is, you know, it's going to, I probably have a setting that says keep 10 backup files. I don't, I'll have to go look. You know, I don't need that many backup files. But here's one that will optimize the database. Um, repair. Anyway, so you get the idea. Um, but this is a this is the database plugin. There are plugins that do each of those things separately, or that do them in some other combination. Um, and again, it's sort of what you're comfortable with. Um, you know, I read a lot. This one was recommended, and it did a lot of stuff that I wouldn't have to do some other way. So it works for me, and it's the one that emails me to notice every day. So I like that. Superstitious, I suppose. Um, yeah, so this one. The next repair date is March 7th. And it's going to optimize it on February 29th. So all of this, you know, can be set, but it depends how frequently you're working on a site, what you are willing to lose. But there's no cost to doing it. Anybody else? Okay, thank you. Um, if you want to enter to win the book, it's the basket is back there on that counter. Um, here's the website. It's uh, my cards are back there, so you can get it. But it's yikeswhatsnext.com/slash wp. If you just remember yikes what's next, it's right here on the tab. Yes? Uh, would you recommend running the website from a Mac Mini server? From a Mac Mini server? Out of my range of expertise, anybody? Just wondering, because no, it's not recommended. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if I needed to do something like that, I'd Google it and start reading. You know, I mean, you know. That's sort of the fallback. If I run into something and I get stuck, I just Google and start reading. <coughs> DreamHost is like ten dollars a month. It's the host that you are using. I would go for shared hosting. And HostGator, twenty five percent discount. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. DreamHost has a little bit more overhead. I got DreamHost though on Cinco de Mayo, totally by accident. It was eight ninety five for the year. I couldn't pass it up. I mean, it just happened that I was looking for a host. I had a list of places I was going to look at. $8.95, unlimited space, seemed like a deal. Um, you know, when the year is up, I meant to move or leave it there, but uh, totally accidental. I had no idea. Um, I just knew I had to leave where I was. They were not, they were, I was not happy with them. I mean, I was at SiteGround for a while. So, um, so if you're interested in the WordPress 3 cookbook, just leave me your card in the back or come to the uh, page and register on the contact form. And on Friday, I will email whoever's name gets both. Thank you.